their lessons that we've done. It's different because there won't be so much um, like exercises like you would typically see. It's more of a workshop, a reading workshop, which basically means that we're just going to kind of learn about the strategies and some methods you can use to improve your reading in general. And I think it's actually really important to follow these strategies. And in fact, when I'm reading in Portuguese, because I'm learning Portuguese, I, I try to use these same methods myself when I'm reading in a different language for me. And I think they're effective. So I would really suggest following these and I think it will help you. So, um, okay, but today we're gonna start with a warm up, just like we typically do. And it's just a really casual warm up um, question. Anybody can talk or participate if they want to add something to the conversation. Um, but yeah, it's just a really easy, simple warm up. So I'll, I'll start with um, Spring. Spring, can you hear me? The first question is for you. First of all, do you like, do you like reading? What do you read? How often do you read? So uh, tell us a little bit about your, your reading habits. Please. So I wanted to briefly just talk about our reading preferences and habits. So I am a big proponent of reading. I think not only is it a great way to exercise your mind and your brain, I think it's an amazing way to learn other languages. So I really think that one of the best things you can do to learn English is to read in English every day. For me, that's super, super important because you can see the language written properly. The grammar is good, the vocabulary is good. It's natural how people write and speak. So I really, while I love watching Netflix and watching movies and, and listening in other languages, I do think reading is the most important thing. And I think it is far more important than watching movies. So these are some basic strategies that I have for reading. And I wrote the most important part at the top. So the first time you read the passage, don't stop reading if you see a word you don't understand. That is so critical. That is so important. Keep going. Keep reading. If you see a word you do not understand, just skip the word and keep going. Your eyes should not stop moving left to right, left to right, until you reach the end of the article or the page or whatever it is. So the first time you read something, you're really just reading for the main ideas. In general, the big picture. If you want, you can circle words or underline words you don't understand, but keep going. Don't stop. That's so important. Hey, everybody. Oops. After you read it the first time, then you can go back and try to figure out the details, the little things that you didn't understand. But the goal of reading is to get the main idea. You do not need to understand every word to get the main idea. 
you can understand more or less, even if there are words you don't know. It's okay. And keep in mind, don't stop reading the first time if you see a word you don't understand. And very importantly, don't translate right away. I cannot emphasize this enough. Don't translate. Don't just translate. I always see students with their phone and when they're reading, they translate every word they don't know. And after 20 minutes, they say, I read two sentences in 20 minutes because I, I translate every word that I don't know from English to my language. So this is the worst way to read, honestly, it is. You're not really learning to read, you're just translating everything. You're not really learning the language. So let's talk about some vocabulary strategies and the reading strategies and vocabulary strategies go together. Uh, they go hand in hand, right? They go together. So let's, let's start off with a sentence. And I will put a difficult, I'll try to put a difficult vocabulary word in the sentence. Um, okay, so we have a sentence here. And it's, you know, it's a pretty easy sentence, but we have this word right here. So maybe you know this word, maybe you do not know this word, okay? Um, if you don't know this word, that's perfect, right? So when I see this word, I don't understand it. I'm reading and I just skip over the word. I circle the word so I can come back later. Okay, so I read the article, for example. I read the, the article, for example, and now I want to go back. But don't just translate. Don't just translate the word. The first thing you need to do is look at the context of the sentence, right? So look at the context, the words around the words. So I don't have a vehicle. So I can't drive to the store. I must walk. So first I'm going to try to concentrate on all the other words, right? This part, this part, this part. Maybe I can guess. Maybe I can guess the definition of this word just by the context, but maybe I can't. So if I don't know, then I want to go and look at, I just want to analyze the word. So are there prefixes, suffixes, root words? I want to analyze the word. So this one, I don't really recognize it. I don't know if it's Latin. I don't know if it's German. I don't know if it's French. I don't know this. I can't recognize it. Okay, so number three. So English to English dictionary. Okay, so this is critical. This is not translation. This is a dictionary in English to English. And let's, let's do that together. So, okay, so how do I look that up? How, I don't have a paper book dictionary with me. So I'll just use my computer and you can do this too. Okay, so google.com vehicle definition. Okay. And here's my English to English dictionary. Vehicle. What's nice about Google is they also give you pictures. That helps you a lot too. Makes it really easy. Okay, but look. Vehicle. Vehicle. Okay, vehicle. Um, it's a noun. Okay, a noun. Oh, wow. It's a noun. Okay, so it's a thing, right? Look at the definition. A thing used for transporting people or goods, especially on land, such as a car, truck, or cart. Oh, wow, okay, now I understand. A vehicle is a car, just another word for car. 
Oh, okay. I can also see the, oh, look at the origin from Latin to French. Here's the history of the word. And oh, look, there are some similar words here. There are some synonyms, automobile, motor vehicle, car. Okay. Okay. I understand the word now. So look, I did not translate this word and now I understand the word, but I didn't need to translate it. Now I understand the word. So this process is the most important part of the lesson. But for example, maybe I didn't understand that. I, I maybe, for example, I still did not understand. Okay, don't translate yet. Even if I still don't understand after all of these were these steps, ask a question. If you have an English teacher, ask a question in English and your English teacher will respond in English. Just like when you were a child, when you were a little kid with mom and dad and you didn't understand a word, you asked your mom or your dad in your language, what is the meaning of this word? And your parents responded in your language. And now you speak your first language fluently. So if we do all of these things and we still do not understand this word, then we can translate, okay? But translation is step five. It's not step four, three, two, or one. Translation must be step five. This is how you learn a language and this is how you read well. And I promise you, I trust you, trust me. Students who just translate everything right away, just always trans everything translating right away, no other strategy, those students don't learn a language well because all you're doing is translating. It's not in your brain, it's in your phone and we want the language in our brain, in our minds. Okay, so I'm sorry for talking so much. Now is your turn. Now is your turn. So we're gonna practice this and don't look at the questions. Don't look at the questions yet if you have the material. If you did, it's okay. But anyways, we're gonna practice. Read the article. Here's the article. If you have the material, please just um, click the link and, and read it on your own computer or your phone. If you don't have it, I will put it on the screen. But here's the thing. There is a time limit, of course. The time limit is 10 minutes and it's a strict 10 minute time limit. So I'm going to stop you and then we're going to talk about the article. So please open the article right here. If you have not already, please open this article. It's a link to CNN, web, the website CNN. And uh, if you don't have this article, then I'm just going to move the article down the screen so you can read it. I'm going, to give, I'm going to give you exactly 10 minutes. So don't forget about your reading and vocabulary strategies. The first time you read this article, you just keep going. Don't stop. Just keep going. Read the entire thing one time until you get to the end. Until you get to the end of the article. And then you can go back with the remaining time and try to figure out the vocabulary that you don't know. So before I begin, so that was 10 minutes. Hopefully you've read the article. Now let's, let's try to answer a couple basic questions about this article. And if you know the answer, feel free to just raise your hand or unmute yourself and answer the question. So so how much does the cup of coffee cost? How much does the cup of coffee cost? Can I? Sure, yes, please. Uh, about uh, $64. 
No? Yeah. $64. Oh my God. Right? $64 for it. It's a lovely glass. Yeah. <laughs> for its premium brew. And here's what the, yeah. the brew tastes like. So I it's think, coffee. I think the premier brew, it's the first. Uh, the first. Uh, I don't know. The first class of coffee. It's yeah, exactly. Yeah, first class. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, this yeah. is premium coffee. Yeah. And mm. here's the bag right here, the bag of coffee, which is about, yeah. I think they said like 2,000 pounds. Four kilograms. Yeah, yes. wow. Four kilograms. Yeah. And they, they make it, they, they grind they grind the coffee beans at your table and then they brew the coffee here in front of you. And it kind of looks more like a tea than a coffee, they say, but supposedly it's excellent. And they serve it in a wine glass. They serve it in a wine glass, not a, not a cup of coffee uh, or not a coffee cup, excuse me. Um, so, okay, so let's have somebody else. So is it recommended to add cream and sugar to this cup of coffee? Are you supposed to add cream and sugar and other things? Uh, who can answer this? Maybe somebody, somebody different? Is it recommended to add cream and sugar? To this cup of coffee. Do you know? Mm, teacher. Sure. Yes, Jessica. Yes. Um. I read. I read. Um. That it's not necessary asking those ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. Here is. Here is the, the, the sentence at the end, right? Purists, that's like somebody who believes in doing things the traditional way, will be pleased to hear that the coffee is served black and straight up. So nothing is added, no milk, no cream, no sugar, nothing. And furthermore, adding milk to the coffee would be like getting a fine wine and topping it with soda water. So yeah, so you do not add cream or sugar to this coffee, not at all. And here it is in the, in the wine glass. This is coffee, not wine. And here is the head, the head bartender, the Italian guy who makes the coffee and this is the very expensive uh, boutique or coffee shop. But does anybody remember, is, is everything very expensive at this place? Or are there other items which are affordable? They're expensive, Tija. Yes, good. Can you elaborate? Can you say something more? Like, what else? Is everything at this coffee shop extremely expensive? Like the coffee, a cup of coffee, sixty-four dollars. That's That's crazy. Yeah. Is every yes? Can't afford to pay the bill. One cup of coffee, sixty-four dollar. It's very expensive. So I know, right? That's crazy. I would never pay yeah. for that. But yeah. my question is, is everything they sell extremely expensive? Jawida, I see your hand. Just wait one minute, Jawida. I want you no to problem. find the answer on my screen. So everybody, please look at my screen. The answer to my question is here. I'll give you one minute to try to find the answer. Here's my question. Is everything on the menu expensive? Is everything super expensive? Or 
besides the coffee, are there options which are affordable and reasonable? Yeah. One minute yeah. and then one minute. The answer is here. Somewhere the answer is here. So I'll give you yeah. seconds. Wait just one minute. And then I want everyone to look for the answer. Accessible. Yeah, one moment. Just wait no, one second. Okay, so um, is everything super expensive at this place or are there some things which are affordable? Yeah, some things. It's affordable. Yeah, exactly. Some things are affordable. Plenty of things are affordable. Where, where in this, where do you see the answer? Can somebody say it to me? Yeah, something affordable. Yeah. Here's the, here it is, right? Aside from the flagship fare. That's a, a, a fancy way of saying, you know, besides the expensive coffee. However, ah, look, contrast word. However, the rest of the menu is considerably more accessible, more affordable. A regular espresso, two pounds, that's British currency, and you can pick up a British classic like a sausage roll for four fifty, or cheese and toast for six. The cafe. This is a cafe, a coffee shop, which also serves reasonably priced wine and cocktails. So yeah, the rest of the stuff on the menu is affordable. It's just this one thing, which is super super expensive. Because it's just special. Super special. Where's it from? Where's the where are the coffee beans from? Uh, London, no. This London. the cafe is in London, but where does the coffee yeah. beans originate? The quiz, the quiz of my fair. Yes. My fair. Which con Yes, that's the the organization that um, kind of creates the, these coffees. What where what country do, do these coffee beans originate from? Ethiopia. Ethiopia in Africa. Yeah, Ethiopia, right? That's where this coffee comes from. It was grown in Ethiopia, right? This and here it is. This particular lot of Ethiopian coffee beans. And of course, Ethiopia is very well known for coffee, for producing coffee. Okay, so that's really the end of the lesson. It was a reading workshop. I hope that was beneficial. Before we end the lesson, are there any questions about the vocabulary in the article? Which words? Now keep in mind that I chose this article because I, I know that there will be difficult words for you. Right? I knew that there would be difficult words. So I know that you do not understand every word. I, that is my choice, right? I did not want you to understand everything. That's good. So what words, do you, do you have any vocabulary questions? Uh, what, what does it mean, Ms. Babe? Which word? Spare, S-P-E-R-E. -E. Uh, can you spell it in the chat for me, please? S-P-A-R-E. R. 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 E. Ah, okay, spare. Okay, let's see here. We say ah. spare or spare. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, let's, let's look at the sentence and let's try to figure it out together. If you can get to London and have a spare $65, you may be able to sample one of the finest brews in the world. What, what do you think it might mean? I don't know. Let's guess. Let's think. Uh, in, in Spanish, it's, it's home. No. It's great time. 
Oh, okay, okay. Spare time, free time, correct. Spare time, free time. Okay, but this is not spare time. This <laughs> is spare money. Spare money. What, yeah, so what, what could it mean? Yeah. Spare could mean... Let's go. Good, that's good, that's okay. You don't need to know. Let's go to the dictionary. Google is your friend. Google is your friend. Additional, oh, okay, adjective. Oh, this word is an adjective, okay. So this word is an adjective, this money is a noun. So this word is describing this noun. Okay, let's go back to the dictionary. Additional to what is required. Extra, extra. So it's like yeah, teacher. So, yes, Jessica. It's it's like saved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. If you can afford to spend sixty five dollars, if you have extra, if you have more money than you need, if you have a lot of money, then um, you 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 can spare sixty five dollars. I like how this word is difficult for Spanish speakers. It's difficult for Spanish speakers and French speakers and Portuguese speakers. Because look, the word comes from German. It does not come from Latin. So good word. Yeah, that's why you didn't understand it. But look, it can be a verb, but here it's a noun. Extra, supplementary, additional, another. So it just means if you have money money to spare extra money 65 dollars is no problem for you does that help you understand this word yes good good okay good any other vocabulary word that you didn't understand you can say spend spend money definition of spur if you are rich you can spend money no uh, if you're rich, you can spare. spare. Yeah. Spare. Yes, because look, if you go down in the dictionary, you can see that it is also a verb. And now look, the verb give. Give. It just means give. If you are rich, yeah. you can spare $65. It's, it's like an advanced... It's an advanced way to say something very, very simple and basic. So yeah. good question. So many good questions. Any other vocabulary? Maybe one more vocabulary word and we can do yeah. the process together. Brew. Sure. Brew. Brew, yes. Premium brew. Good. Okay, good. This word is used many times. Let's look at it yeah. first. Yes. Yes, let's look at this first sentence. Okay. So remember sure. Yes, question? No. Oh, okay, never mind. Okay, sorry. One, one second. Okay, so context. Let's think about our context, right? Remember, step 1, context. And of course, I say this every single time, every class. What is the form of the English language? What is the form? Subject, verb, and object. Subject plus verb plus object. Okay. This is a sentence. This is how you make a sentence. So yes. in this sentence, what is the subject of this sentence? It's coffee shop. Coffee shop. Coffee shop. Subject. Yes. yes, very good. The subject of the sentence. A London coffee shop. Mm -hmm. okay. What is the verb? It's charging. It's charm. Yeah, it's charging. Okay, what is the object of this sentence? It's premium brew. Six premium brew. I think premier bro, if you if you say it's it's, it's a, a subject is is a object uh, is a verb. Yes. Premier bro, it's object, no? Exactly. Remember the object is a phrase. 
a phrase consisting of a couple of words. So this is the object of your sentence. It's premium brew. So what costs sixty-four dollars? What what is sixty? What what is what do you get for sixty-four dollars at this cafe? You get a. You get a coffee. The yeah. yeah, you get a coffee. Coffee, right? coffee yeah. So, and coffee, it's. Yeah, it's a synonym for coffee. A brew is an informal yeah. synonym for coffee, right? So let's, but it's not just a noun. So you look. So look, as a noun, it's either a kind of beer or a cup of tea or coffee. A brew is just a synonym, right? It's a drink, a brew, a tea, a coffee, a beverage, right? And of course, this word is also a, a verb. I'm going to mute you, Spring, because your dog is barking, but not because I don't want to hear you talk. Um, but it is also a verb, right? So it's used as a verb. It's used as a noun. As a verb, make beer. To brew to make beer or to make tea or coffee by mixing it with hot water. So when oh, I go yeah. back here, here it is a noun. Here it is a noun. This is a brew, but let me look. Ah, is this, Round. is this an, a noun or a verb here in this, in this way? Brew, noun or verb? Verb, I think, in the past. Yes, exactly. No. Yeah, look, it's the it's a verb. Look, it's conjugated in the past tense, right? So hmm. let's look at the next one. Read this sentence. This sentence here. Is this a verb or noun here? It's meaning make coffee? Yeah. Verb. It's a verb, exactly. It, sir, you know, I think in the first bro is, uh, we say in French, uh, le grand de café. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah, big coffee. <laughs> yeah, no, grand, not café. big, grand, grand. Uh, uh, in French, we say les grands de café, les grands. It's mm -hmm. um, a small uh, café after after you uh, you use it. 